Hello everyone and welcome back to JDD TV. I'm your host Josh and we are back for the match preview between Canada and Croatia. This is a do or die situation for the Canadian men's national team and they need a result. So let's break it down. Hopefully you guys are excited and if you are as always be sure to drop a like, drop a sub and let's get into the episode now. All right, everyone. So the Canadian men's national team came off playing their first World Cup match in 36 years. And boy, did they look incredible. They obviously had some moments where, you know, there was question marks around the defending with the goal. But other than that, they were fantastic. They cut through that Belgium defense and they created so many chances. It's unbelievable they walked away with nothing. They should have bare minimum got a draw, but they really should have won the match. The penalty in my eyes was a big unfortunate event that occurred because I think that if they would have scored it that early with the momentum in their favor I think they would have almost been guaranteed to pick up three points or at least a point instead we got away with nothing and now this sets up this do or die situation for Croatia now in Croatia's first match they took on Morocco and they drew nil nil that opened up the group right now looking at the standings Belgium's in first with three Morocco Croatia each have one and then Canada is sitting in the basement with zero if we get a result against Croatia we're up to three and let's kind of hope and assume that Belgium is going to beat Morocco. That puts Belgium at six, would put us at three, Croatia at one, and Morocco at one. So that's just how wide open it is. However, if we lose to Croatia, they're on four, and if we unfortunately get to watch Belgium pick up another three points, in this scenario, it would eliminate us because Belgium would have six points, Croatia would have four, Morocco would have one, and we would have zero being eliminated after two matches, and the match against Morocco means nothing. So obviously that kind of changes the narrative about what Canada need to do against Croatia because this match matters. Before the tournament kicks off, because there's three matches kind of in a row, we had some players come back from injury, there was a discussion of whether, you know, we could have nipped a point from Belgium, maybe rest the odd player here and there for Croatia, and then go full out against Morocco. But it's not really like that because if we don't take care of business, bare minimum one point, we're done. We're done, it's over, that's just what's going to happen. So it really changes what needs to happen for this match. and. Croatia is going to be a little bit nervous now. I mean, after watching that, like they're the talk of the town. They're the talk of Qatar right now. Canada's performance against Belgium was simply incredible. It's putting a lot of nations on notice. Belgium got very lucky. I mean, the reaction of Kevin De Bruyne when he won the player of the match, he's like, wow, like, you know, I didn't even have that good of a game. But anyways, it, it's an incredible turn of events, and I can't wait to see what Canada is going to do, which begs the question as well, how are they going to line up? Because they're starting 11 against Belgium. You you clearly saw they went for speed. They played in the 3-4-3 system. They had the one striker in Jonathan David. They had Richie Larey and Alfonso Davies having overlapping runs all the time. Those two play very well together, in my opinion. And on the other side, you had Junior Hoyle and Tejan Buchanan. I thought JD was pretty quiet in that match. I felt like Junior Hoyle didn't have as good of a showing as he was probably hoping to because the game against Japan was incredible. I really think it's time to shake things up and I'm going to actually do a predicted lineup and I'm hoping it's going to look like this because this is the predicted lineup I actually had as well against Belgium. So taking a look at it, it's going to line up in a 4-4-2, but as I've talked about, it can absolutely shift around. In goal, you have Milan Borian. At right back, you have Alistair Johnston. The two center backs is Vittoria and Kamal Miller. At left back, I have Samuel Adekubi and I'm, I'm leaving Lorea out. I did think he had a good game against Belgium, obviously. Drew the penalty, if you guys think it was a penalty, I mean, there was a, a reason he left his foot kind of leading into Witzel to create contact. Regardless, he, I thought he had a strong match anyways, but I just think it's a nice idea to kind of shift it up. Every player isn't able to play every minute, and Adekubi is one of those players who I, I think deserves a start. So I'd put him at left back. The four midfielders, I have Buchanan at right mid, I'd have Davies at left mid, I'd have Hutch and Eustachio as the two central midfielders. Now Hutch only played around like the 60 minute mark, so... I think you'll be pretty fresh, be able to do it again. And like I said, this match matters. I think there's a bit of a drop off. Not that Kone didn't look good, but I think what Hutch can do and bring to this midfield will be very important. So if you're able to get 60 minutes out of him again, absolutely do it. Play him along Eustachio. And those are your four midfielders with Kyle Laird and Jonathan David up front. Now, Jonathan David didn't look very good, like I mentioned in the match against Belgium. He was very quiet, sometimes felt a little isolated. I think he plays better with, with a striker beside him. So this is an opportunity to get Kyle Laren in, who brings a different presence. When Laren came on the pitch, David became a little bit even more invisible, but they were still playing that 3-4-3. I think if you can get them playing as dual strikers the way that they're used to, you get a lot out of both of them. Kyle Laren brings a different presence as well. You saw a few opportunities that he had in the Belgium match where they're basically just headers, whipping balls in the box. He was able to get there. I'd like to see Laren get another opportunity, and that's how I'd like to see it line up. Now, because Croatia has one of the best midfielders in the tournament, in the best midfields in the tournament, it's time to be able to plug up that midfield if we need to do, kind of turn it into a three-man midfield. 
And the way that this system can shift, which is what I really like, is it can go into a 3-4-1-2. Borean obviously still in net. At right wing back, you have Tejan Buchanan. He can do it on both sides of the ball. We know that. Outside right center back is Alistair Johnston. Central center back is Victoria. Outside left center back is Miller. Left wing back is Atakubi. That's a nice looking back five. The two midfielders will still be Hutch and Eustachio. You then have Davies kind of coming centrally. You give him that freedom to roam around. Like I said, it's not my favorite position for him, but again, th th this can shift shape. So he's a left back. He's got the defensive ability. He'd be fine to go in the midfield, roam around, and even track back when needed to kind of plug up that midfield. And then you have the two strikers up front and Jonathan David and Kyle Laren. That's how I'd like to see them go against Croatia. Croatia had 65% of the ball against Morocco. Morocco had a game plan similar to what they're probably going to do against Belgium. We were a little bit more toe-to-toe -to -toe with Belgium. We basically shared possession. We had a lot more chances though. I think Morocco will probably sit back a little bit, allow Belgium to have the ball similar to Croatia, and they're gonna look to hit with speed on the break. I think it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Canada has showed that they wanna play, they want the ball, they wanna create their own luck, and I really respect that. So I'm curious to see if that's gonna be the same type of game plan that they're gonna go up against Croatia about, or if they're gonna maybe just drop off a little bit more and look to hit on the break. Regardless, there's a ton of speed. I mean, Alistair, he does have the opportunity to go up when need be. You have Tejan there. Then obviously on the left-hand side, you know what Adekubi Davies can do with two strikers up front. That's how I'd like to see them line up. I mean, it's going to be interesting. And looking from the Croatia perspective, I wanted to get Izak back on the channel, but unfortunately, you know, well, not unfortunately, but he's in Qatar. So he's, he's a very busy man. He did try his hardest to get on the channel. I respect that. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get him on. But looking at the Croatian perspective from my eyes is the fact that this team is obviously... World Cup finalists in 2018. They are in the Nations League semifinals. This is a team with a lot of talent. They're going to line up probably in that 4-3-3. It's what they played against Morocco. It's probably what you're going to see now with that midfielder of Brozovic, Kovacic, and Modric. You got Perisic up front as well. I don't know exactly who's going to probably play on the, the right-hand side. There's no true answer. Pasolik came on at halftime, but they didn't score in that match. And I thought that was a reason to bring up. Like this is, a, this is a good back four. This is a solid midfielder, good wingers. This is a very well-rounded team aside from the striker. Now, I like uh, Kramrich, I do. I think he's a he's a good striker, but he doesn't really fit the system that Croatia wants to do, which is why like you've seen Budimir and some other players come in and try to take that number nine opportunity. They haven't really been able to do that, and Croatia sometimes can struggle to find goals, and that's a big opportunity right there. We got a, a bit of a red flag, that ton of a ball, wasn't able to carry to much chances and really kind of missed that striker up front. So that could be a key area if Croatia don't take their chances, similar to Canada not taking theirs against Belgium maybe we can have an opportunity to do something. We need bare minimum a point. If we get a point in Belgium again, hoping that they win, because you got to look at the odds, it would be Belgium with six, Croatia with two, us and Morocco each with one, all to play for in the last one. But if we lose this we're, and Belgium win, we're pretty much done. So this match is very different than it would have been if we even picked up a point or a win. It's very nerve wracking. We still haven't scored a goal. We're waiting 36 plus years for the goal. So hopefully we can find an opportunity to do so. We will be doing the watch along over on One Soccer once again. You guys were fantastic. 3,000 current concurrent viewers and 230,000 views. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Find us over there on Sunday again. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Five takeaways. We'll be back over on this channel as always. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this preview. And if you did, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and we'll see you soon. Cheers, friends.